Hi, I'm Ben with Teleport, and today I'll be doing a deep dive into using Teleport for Postgres access. This video is going to focus on using AWS Postgres Aurora, but the same can be applied for self-hosted um, databases. So why would you use database access? There's a few things you can do with database access. You can retrieve short-lived certificates using a single sign-on flow. So all of the users in your organization don't have to have provisioned IDs, and if people come and go, they will automatically get a new short-lived certificate for logging in. Also, everything is audited, so you know which user is using which database role, which is pretty common because you may only have a few roles in your database, but you might have a very large organization. And lastly, you can also use our access request feature if you're looking to do role escalation. An example could be you have a team which has read access, but they may need to access certain tables. You want to make sure that other teammates will verify that they are meant to and can have access to those um, tables. So there's a video here. I'm going to go straight to the uh, AWS for Aurora. Here we have um, our docs on how you set this up. I'm going to just give you a quick high-level overview of what this will look like before I dive too deep. So here we have um, Teleport deployed within AWS Cloud. I've combined our auth and proxy service into sort of one box here, but you can separate this, use DynamoDB, provide a backend. I'm going through a GitHub auth, um, so this is my flow. And then to the right here, you can see that we have a VPC, which isn't necessarily required, but often you will have your um, database in a sort of subnet which doesn't have public internet access and for that reason we have a db service which dials back to the teleport auth and proxy which will be proxying all of the connections you see it's wearing this very dandy hat for the iem role this is specific to aws and this can trip you up in a few ways uh, about getting it set up correctly but this iem role is needed because Teleport will need to talk to um, the RDS database with a special IAM role property. And I'll uh, dive into this a bit more. And then, of course, we have the RDS database. We're using Aurora. Teleport only supports dedicated provisioned. It doesn't currently support serverless. Let's uh, dive in. OK, so before we dive into the setup, I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's complete. Here I have three databases. We're going to focus on the Postgres database. We have this connect button here. This connect button provides you command line instructions. You can't actually connect in the um, UI. So let me get my terminal. So I am uh, currently logged in already to my um, Acme demo cluster. And I have a few roles and rules. You can see I have one, one database. And you can use uh, uh, tshdb ls to see the databases. One thing that you need to do is you need to log into the database. Modify this. OK, so we do uh, ls again. Make this a bit smaller. And then you can see I'm already logged into the Aurora. But let's just do this again. Uh, db login Aurora. And it says, the connection information has been saved. You can now access the database using the following commands. So I already have psql installed. And you can see I've already done this. So we're connecting to a service name. You see here it's Acme Demo, which is the name of my Teleport cluster. And then this is the name of the database. This also lets you connect to multiple databases at one time, um, which is a handy feature. I have a user, Alice which is different than my teleport user. This is a user that is currently created in the RDS database. And I have my database name, which is my test DB. So you can see I'm logged in. And one thing you can see here is we have, you know, a few users in here. Teleport was the user that I created at the beginning, which is the RDS super user. But I've also created this Alice user, which has um, RDS IAM properties. Okay. 
So let me walk you through the steps. So first up, like I mentioned, you need to enable IAM authentication on the Aurora database. Let me show you what this looks like in um, AWS. So you can see here, I have a MySQL and I have Postgres going to the MySQL. Under this configuration, you want to make sure that this IAM DB authentication is enabled. I've used Terraform to configure this. I'll show you this afterwards. But if you're going through the UI to set this up, these are things to look out for. You can also see I connected to my test DB. This is the DB name that we created. And I have a master username and master password. These I've used with a Terraform provider to seed and create the initial user. Um, this will be dependent on how you sort of set up and configure your database yourself. So next up, we have the IAM policy. So this IAM policy lets the database service log into the instance and then attach the credentials to that user. So this on here, this is a little different. Um, we have RDS DB, we have the region, the, uh, um, the account ID, the DB user, the DB cluster ID, and the DB username. You can make the DB username a wildcard, but these other two, I think, need to be defined. Also, just to note that this cluster ID is specific and it's different than another ARN. So this cluster ID is the resource ID referenced here. So next up, you, know, you need to create a database user. This will grant the RDS IAM role to that user. Um, and then this is sort of like the magic that makes stuff work. And then here in our example, we set up a brand new teleport service. Um, I'm going to skip through this. Um, it's creating roles. But next up, there is the database service. So the database service, this is this instance here. And I have actually added it to my cluster. So you can, um, I can show you what it looks like. So in my um, DB instance, it connects to um, Teleport Cloud in my case. I have SSH enabled just for debug purposes. This can be actually very handy um, if you're having issues with firewalls and connectivity. Sometimes I just use PSQL and AWS guidelines just from this box to connect to the um, database to make sure everything's configured correctly. And because I have this database service within the um, like VPC in the subnet, I've been able to connect multiple databases to this host. So for my Postgres, I have the Postgres endpoint. This can also differ too. This is the read and write endpoint. Um, see this writer instance. This information gets from connectivity. You can see this here. This is the endpoint and this is the standard um, Postgres port. Come back here. You also have to define the region. I'm in US West 2. And I've just added some static labels there. Another thing you need to do is you need to set up the credentials for the AM role. We've done this already, but you just need to make sure that this credentials has been attached to the instance. So if I even come into the EC2 instance, my DB Bastion, you can see that this host has a RDS role. And then in this role, it has a few policies. So I have the RDS connect policy. You can see in here that it can connect to US West 2. This is my account ID. This is the DB user and then the cluster name. And then it's any user for that cluster it can access. And then last up, we have the connection, which we've already kind of go through, but we can just do this again. So let's come back to my terminal. So for this purpose, I'm just going to log out. And then I'm logging through GitHub. I've already sort of authenticated GitHub, so the flow is taking me back. So you can see database is missing here, so I need to log into the database. So log in Aurora. Right. 
and then you can see, also check uh, like your environment variables so you can see um, the Postgres mode where the certificates for this database is. The way in which I've configured this role too is it's a 12 hour certificate. So come 12 more hours, I'll need to log in again and get these new certificates. And then I can just use psql to connect as this Alice user and my test DB. And here we are. So we can see these tables and um, we're done. So like I said, everything is mostly recorded here. You can see that we've ran a few queries. We fully read all the executed queries. So like a slash du might come up different in the audit log here, but you can see it's um, my user is Ben Arendt, but my DB user is Alice and um, it's performed the actions. So let me show you what this looks like in my Terraform code. I would highly recommend using Terraform or CloudFormation to configure this. It makes it very easy off the bat. And so you can see I have a um, RDS cluster, which I've created, my test DB. I have this master username. This is sort of the super user, which I have a Terraform provider, which will seed the user. You need to add cluster instances. I've just created a few small cluster instances to this host. Also for testing, I have um, I put these secrets into Secret Manager, um, which can be also handy for debugging. Here I next up, I have a Postgres provider. This provider connects to the database using the username and password. And then the only thing it does is it just creates a user. So it creates a, the PG user Alice, and then I assign the role RDS uh, IAM, which is a very unique role. One thing, if you're not super experienced with Postgres, is that Postgres roles also means user, but users also have roles. So it can get a bit confusing. Next up, you can see I have IAM roles. And in my um, instance profile, which gets attached, I have this um, IAM role policy. And in this role policy, I've just used these variables to get the current account ID, the region, and then lastly, I'm calling in the um, AWS cluster resource ID. Here, I've also done the same thing for my SQL and Redshift, but I'll skip over that. And then lastly, you know, I have passed all this information into my DB host. So if I come in here, you can see that I have, you know, passed in these environment variables, which is another handy way to configure it. This is my um, etc teleport.yaml file. In my case, I have a pretty strict VPC, so I've had to set up security groups for accessing various ports. But that sort of kind of comes to the end of the configuration using Terraform. If you have any interest, you know, you can feel free to contact us on Slack and discussions. We're happy to um, help set up and configure. And then once everything is connected, you will see it here, and then you can use your command line. The other thing your teams might want to do is use um, a GUI. We support most major GUIs as long as they support SSH certificates. So I'm going to just um, try creating a new server here. So teleport demo. So the host address here, actually I have to come to my docs to figure out the GUI client, so you select the name. All you need to do is, okay, so we collect the name. You leave it empty. Oh, and then the service here says root Aurora. In our case, this will be, this is the name of the service. So leave that empty. Add the service here. And then we need to make sure that the SSL is verify full. Now I may need to get these client certificates, but we can see if it will pre-populate it. Okay, it's thinking. Give this a second. 
get these root certificates and then add them in here. This is mainly, I think, because I'm on a Linux machine. I found that it was worked well on um, a Mac. Yeah, it's timed out. So let me just get all of these root CAs. Oh, let me change the user to Alice. Ah, okay. So in my case, because it goes through teleport, I think it goes, oh, well, it's timed out, let's see. Oh, it has connected. Yeah, I think in my case, you see we connected to the Postgres, but you'd need to change it up oh, now connected to the MyTestDB. It had f the Postgres port by removing the Postgres port, it goes through teleport, then that's kind of the fix. But mostly this should work out of the box for you. And then all of these actions here, you can know you can use um, SQL in here and you know um, check out the tables and do everything else that you want to do in Postgres. So this brings me to the end. Um, I'll be doing another video on self-hosted Postgres that requires a bit more steps um, for creating the certificate. Actually, there's one last thing before I go. One important thing is when you create these users and roles, you need to add in the DB user. So in my case, we have Alice, we just have Teleport. So just make sure that this is either a wildcard or it has predefined which user principle that these role like db users have been logged in as or else you won't be able to connect okay so that brings me to the end of a quick tour of teleport for postgres rds examples i found it can be a little tricky so if you have any questions feel free to hit us up on our slack or on our community channel or one of our sales engineers we'd be more than happy to help thanks for watching